Good morning, good morning. Hey, whoa, <laughs> putting on my, <laughs> I feel a bit puffy lately. I don't know, too much fun, too much fun. Hey, how's it going, folks? Um, welcome, welcome, smiles, everyone smiles. Uh, destination decluttered in the his, in the yours, in the ours, in the house. Um, I am here, let me do this, getting my act together, taking it on the road. Not really, but that'd be kind of fun. I love road trips, as you know. Um, but hey, um, nice to see you. Uh, this is the, uh, what do I call it? The uh, romper room part of the show that I love. So good morning, Karen. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning, G-Mom. Mom, listen to me. GGX2000, nice to see you. You know, it's weird. If we ever, any of us ever meet in real life, which it may happen, it may not. But gosh, I'm going to call you like by your name. Um, Teresa, nice to see you. Um, hey, so TikTok Live, as promised, Sue Bell 121 is chiming in. Um, I love it. I love it. Um, I am here. Yeah, I like the waves. So I'm here to help you. I'm here to get you inspired, motivated, get you from stuck to started is kind of what I'm thinking of. Christina Long, nice to see you. Carol, nice to see you. PM11208, it's so funny when people, German made 95, nice to see you as well. Karen, all sorts of people. So nice to see you. Um, I am here for the next hour or so um, to, as I was kind of saying, to help you get from stuck to started. What I have found is being a decluttering life coach is that, and, and just like a human on the planet, frankly, is I think all of us need some sort of spark in our ignition to get the engine going. So we even just get out of bed and, you know, kind of say, okay, here's another day. What am I going to do with it? I know this myself because I get tired. Um, it is it is gray and rainy out where I am, and I want it to be sunny and warm. I will say the the weather does affect me. So like I often need to life coach myself to say, all right, let's get out of bed. Let's make something good about this. A lot of it is so much of it is, and I this is this is clutter wise and otherwise, as I like to say, is just notice, just think about, just here's an idea to play with that the thoughts in your head make you feel a certain way in your body. And when you feel a certain way in your body, you do a certain thing in the world, I like to say with your hands. So you've got your head, your heart, and your hands. I like alliteration. That's why I call my coaching Destination Decluttered. And if you haven't um, met me before, hey, my name is Beth, but please just remember Destination Decluttered. Um, I am a decluttering life coach, and I help folks on doing TikTok lives um, quite often. And I do, I have a, what do I get? I got a mailing list for you to sign up on if you want to. I do coaching. I don't have any coaching slots available or or consultations quite yet, but next week I will open that up again. I just need to get my act together as far as that goes. Um, and what I'm here to do is just help you get from stuck to started and not just that, but moving in the right direction. Now, I tend to work in a, um, a road trip metaphor. Uh, so I like to um, frame things in kind of what would I do with a, if I was in my car? Because that is the slight way, the slightly different way of approaching things that I experimented with when I felt stuck and overwhelmed and stressed out and freaked out and being like, oh my God, is this going to be my life? Because I don't want it to be my life and my house looks awful, blah, 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 all that stuff. I used to plan really cool road trips. I used to write books about road trips. I have a website about vintage road trips, right? All that. And I remembered once in frustration saying to myself when I couldn't, I don't know, just things weren't jiving. It was like, why can't I treat, my, I can plan a cool road trip. Why can't I plan my life like a road trip? And then there was that kind of dramatic pause. And then I heard from my, what I call my internal co-pilot is, um, Oh, I suddenly sound echoey. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, the internet. I'll try. Nothing has changed on my end. Hopefully it, it susses itself out. But what I want to offer is when I asked myself that question, why can't I just plan my life like a kick-ass road trip? The quiet voice in me, my, my co-pilot said, um, why not? All right. So I see that some people are saying that I'm echoey. Um, and I will pause for dramatic effect to see if that will suss it out. 
um, the internet. Isn't it wonderful? Here's the thing I want to offer you is maybe this is a good way for me to, okay, see, it's fixed itself. You know, who knows what's going on out in outer space, right? There we go. Um, so let's get to it. Let's, what is, just think about this. You don't even need to put it in the comments if you don't want to, but just notice this morning, what is keeping you stuck? If you're stuck at all, maybe you just need you know, a little bit of motivation, a little bit of companionship, a little bit of buddy system. What do they call that? My my ADHD inspired clients talk talk about body doubling. You know, when you're doing your decluttering and you don't want to be alone because you're doing it, you got a buddy. I could be your buddy for the next like 40 some odd minutes um, for you to just put me on in the background and um, listen to the encouraging words that I have to say about you making the life that you want to and just learning how to do that in a really low key way, which is decluttering your home. Decluttering your home um, helps you remind you of what's important to you and what isn't. What used to be important to you and just checking in right now, is it still important to me? Um, and also in that kind of road trip metaphor, as I like to use, is where do you want to go? What do you want your life to look like in the future? Your future being literally even like a minute from today. The future is always here. What do you want it? Okay. And um, so just ask yourself, what's going on? Ask yourself why i touching stuff with my bare foot. Um, and if you're stuck, what, what's, what, uh, what are you stuck with? I bet it's going to be. I will say this. And Christina Long, thank you for saying, I love doing this. I finished my teen's room finally. Rock on with your bad self. What I will, what I will, what I will say from my coaching, my loving coachingness, is I am hoping that you also, um, your team was involved in it too, because this is how I approach this: is I consider decluttering to be a life skill. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because life, because decluttering is answering the question. Is this important to me? Do I want this in my home? Do I want this in my life or not? A asking that question, listening for the answer, trusting that answer, and doing something with that information, right? If it wasn't a life skill, we would all just know it organically, but we need to be taught it. And some of us weren't taught. It's like driving a car. This is me with the car metaphor. Driving a car, decluttering is like driving a car. Decluttering is something that will open up your world to do all sorts of things because you won't be stuck with always like kind of always cleaning and buying and buying and cleaning and tidying and playing with it. Like I, your stuff should be in a place so you can go off and do other things, right? And so the way I like to think about it is touching base with yourself. And before you even start with your decluttering, again, like a road trip, say, where do I want to go? Why am I even going to show up and declutter? Now, this is, I'll give you a hint. I'm always giving you hints to the answers. The answers are that your destination is what you want your home to look like visually because we have found as human beings when we see things we like, we feel better. So you, wanna, you want your home, what do you want your home to look like? What do you want to feel like when you're in your home? Now, here's a funny thing that the opposite, I work in opposites a lot. I think it's a really fun way to just use your brain in different ways. And um, uh, Christina, that's great. Thank you for following up. And I love it. Um, I'm glad you feel good doing it yourself. Rock on. It's all about feeling good. It's about feeling better. So when I ask you, if I was, if you were one of my one-on-one -on -one clients, the first consultation after our consultation where we realized it was a good fit and we talked about price and scheduling and all that, and we were like, woohoo, let's go on this road trip together. First session we would have would be all about your destination. What do you want your home to look like? writing that down, trusting your, your brain to bring that out. What do you want to feel like in your home? Now the feel like can also just, if you don't know, I don't know, better, calm, whatever, you may not have the good words for how you want to feel. Um, because as humans, we tend to veer towards the negative, the drama, the, oh, how it isn't working out is so much more of an interesting story. I always joke that like happy people never make the cut, rarely make the cover of People Magazine. And here's a funny thing. I don't even know if People Magazine still exists. I'm a Gen Xer, so I have a pop culture reference, but it ends at a certain point. And I don't go out shopping that much anymore. My husband does the grocery shopping, so I don't even know. But notice that the drama and the, and the unhappy words um, stick with you. So we use that. Okay. Oh, and thank you for everybody who's following my page. Um, I really appreciate that. I love what I do. I love showing up. Um, and I do uh, 
TikTok lives often. So um, you'll be in good hands when you follow me because you're, you'll get notified when I do these lives. All right. Um, what I want to just suggest is if your house is feeling, making you feel blurg, ug, meh, what's the opposite word maybe or feeling from that? Write it down. And then the last one, but as equally as important, how do you want your home to function? Now, this is one I'll give you the, you know, the standard answer to me is I want to be able to have everything in its place. But I want to have the right quantity of things in my home. Not too much, not too little, just right. Just like Goldilocks, okay? And when I go to grab that thing, I want to know where it is. I want to be able to get it. I want to be able to use it easily. And when I'm done with that, I want to easily be able to put it back. That's the functioning. And the functionality of your home is so important because the more efficient your home is, the more easy it is to live in it. That means the less amount of time you have to spend doing finding things, seeing if it works, struggling to find a put, place to put it away, that stuff takes up time. The way I coach and the way I teach, I teach you to make your home so much more efficient so you minimize the amount of time you do all the decluttering, and then you maximize the amount of time that you spend out in the world living your life. Okay, that's why I'm a life coach and a decluttering coach, because I want to teach you the skills to declutter so you can make your decluttering so efficient and so minimal that you just are out expanding your delight in the world with the time. Okay, um, so here we go. I see some con comments and some uh, stuff coming in. So I want to hit the hit the comments. If you have a question, if you're stuck, I'm thinking you may be overwhelmed and not know where to start. I can help you with that. Um, and let's see, my glasses are amazing. Oh, thank you. You know what? I'll, I'll be honest. I used to have more fancy glasses, but they got kind of heavy and I had to get a new prescription. These are actually, and this is not a, this is not a paid promo. So I, you know, whatever, but these are those pair glasses where you can get the, the magnetic things. See? So like when I'm not coaching, when I'm not online, I often just have this. When I do this, it gives me a bit more structure when I'm showing up on camera. And really the thing I love about the magnets is I also have the ones that are, um, uh, what do you call it? Sunglasses. I love the magnetic sunglasses. I had that with my last pair. Um, and so thank you. That's what those are. Good morning. Good morning, Amber. Um, PM1128 is saying, as a kid, my mom always did all the decluttering. House never cluttered. Maybe that's why I don't know how. Yeah. Here's why I am, I don't want to say train. This is why I coach folks that are parents right now to get their children involved in this process. You don't know how to do something somebody always does for you. It is good to have skills. You didn't know how to drive a car until you learned how to drive it. And if somebody was always driving you someplace, why would you learn? Just notice that. Don't judge yourself. Judgment is an unhelpful feeling and thought that just shuts you down. Just say, oh, yeah, how funny is that? I just never was taught this. Then you learn this life skill and you go through your life, rest of your life doing it. There we go. Amber is saying less home clutter, less mind mess. Yep. And more space for fun. Ha Amber, I love that. I love that because I am all about the fun and also all about the less mind mess. I literally have a little post-it note right here to remind me of my kind of, not ethereal, but more abstract destinations, abundance and generosity, flexibility and peace of mind. Oh. Feeling peace up here is the best feeling in the world. So you got it. Now, Ms. Velma says, I have executive dysfunction issues. I totally need this. Awesome. Here you are. Um, usually when I hear people talk about executive dysfunction, I think there may be some ADHD. I am not, I am not, um, what do I say? Like a doctor, nor do I play one on TV, but, um, and nor, nor am I diagnosing. But what I will offer is the way I coach, and this is what I approach life is everybody's brain is different. Everybody's brain works differently. So Find a system, find a way to work with your brain to get the results you want. That's how I portray it. Now, oftentimes when I'm doing a, diff, uh, uh, you know, a general TikTok live for hundreds of people that show up just randomly, they might be walking by and like, oh, what's this, right? We can only get into it at a certain level. But when I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with people that are willing and able and ready to change the stuff that they do and repeat and change their habits, change the way they're thinking... We work together and we get really granular to see where things aren't working for your brain. We get curious and it's exciting to find out where and it's not working. So then you can fix it. It's like finding like if you if you were like a plumber and there's a leak somewhere and you don't know, but it's showing up over here. You you trace the pipe and you go back to being like, oh, here's where it is. You fix that. And then it's it changes the outcome. OK, 
So you got this coffee talk with Mama Rita. Nice to see you. I will see you in a few weeks. I was just thinking about you this morning because it's almost September, you guys. It's almost September. I do a 10 week and this is not to be an infomercial about my coaching, but I will just honest, I will tell you where my, this came from is that so when I coach people one on one, I start with a 10 week program. If you want to re-up, and I say this right to all my clients, and many do, they say, oh, I loved this. I'm making good habits. I want to continue. 10 weeks is always like my unit of measure for coaching. I do no less. I do no more unless you sign up for another 10 weeks. So X times 10, right? X 10. I just signed a new client. And oh my gosh, the way that the scheduling is going, I'm already into our 10 weeks is going to end right before Thanksgiving right after Thanksgiving with some clients too, because their schedule and my schedule. So just think about, even if you just show up for these um, TikTok lives, your life can look and feel differently. Your home can look and feel differently before the holidays. Um, I will say, and this will be the infomercial about my coaching, is when I do open it up, because I have to get my head around, I wanna make sure I have the space and time to help as many people as I can. But if you wanna get there quicker and more easily, kind of like, you know, instead of taking a, a general class, you get a one-on-one -on -one, like trainer, a coach, big surprise, life coach, and that can help you, okay? There we go. Um, oh, there. thank you, Amber, for saying I've been so incredibly helpful. Just what you, I'm glad you said that. Um, and somebody else said something to, I wanted to just make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Oh, there's a bunch of messages. And as soon as I scramble, as soon as I go like this, they're going to go past. So I want to make sure I get everybody's. Okay. So what do we go? Here we go. There was something. Um, how do you deal with inherited family heirlooms? Such a good question. And now the things zip past me. So I forgot who, who, who mentioned it. But thank you for mentioning that. Because you're not the only person who's dealing with that. Okay. Hopi. Okay. This is how I suggest you deal with it. I am your coach when you, whenever I am, I am in your life for you and nobody else. So what I want to offer to you is you can make a decision to say, what do I want to do with these things? Do, and this is, remember I said kind of up thread. And if you are watching this, actually, I record these um, and upload them to the Destination Decluttered YouTube channel. So if you're just tuning in, you can watch that when I upload it. And I got to remember to upload. I'm going to write down, see, write down things before you forget them. Upload TikToks from this week. Okay. That being said, up thread, somebody was asking about this. And to me, I keep it so simple when I coach so freaking simple. Decluttering is a life skill. Decluttering, the life skill of decluttering is asking yourself, what is this thing? Do I want it in my life? If I want it in my life, where do I want to put it that makes sense to me? If I don't want it in my life, what's an easy way for me to get, get it out of my life and feel good about it, right? So Hopi, I would say start with you. Notice the heirlooms word. Heirlooms implies to me, and this is the only way I know how to coach when I'm doing these um, TikTok lives, is I read your words very seriously. Also, when I coach one-on-one, -on -one, I listen so hard because the words we use have meaning to us. We would have picked another word, but you chose heirlooms. Heirlooms might imply a certain amount of value. Now that value can be monetary, that can be sentimental, that can be historic in your family. Depending upon what your definition is of heirloom, you might make a different decision. So for example, I will share with my life. Um, I, uh, my husband and I married a wicked lot of years, Boston accent. There was my wicked, my first wicked. If you're playing um, Destination Decluttered, like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like bingo, right? Um, anyhow, we don't have kids. Fine with me. Love it. Love my life. Um, however, I do have nieces and nephews and I have my mother. So I have certain things in my life that are mine. I don't want to saddle anybody with the stuff of mine that brings me joy. Now, when I am gone, I, I am going to write a note. I will, I will tell them to say, hey, you know what? With a few exceptions, I will say, open up the doors to my house and let people come in and grab whatever they want. Of course, my family gets first dibs for anything they want, but they don't need to feel guilted into this is a family heirloom with a few exceptions. And the few exceptions I will say are some small items that have been handed down from previous generations that don't take up a lot of room that may be the family histories that takes up a very small amount of room in my life that I would love to pass along because it is, I am just the steward of this stuff. It is not mine. It is something that I am taking care of to pass it on, right? Other than that, 
do what you will. So notice Hopi, I'm asking you, and I'm just saying to you, just get curious and ask yourself the question, what of all of this do I want, if any? And if I don't want it, that's okay. If I don't want something that was belonged to somebody else, it doesn't mean I don't love them just because I don't love their stuff. And if I don't love their stuff, doesn't mean I don't love them. You know, you love the person, you don't have to love the stuff, right? I hope that helps. Um, I'm currently organizing a decluttering to have an easier time to back to move in a month. Lauren, Maureen, you got this. And I love that you're starting sooner rather than later. Everybody, just start. Just start. Go from stuck to started. This is what I help with so much on a daily basis myself. The sooner you start, the sooner you get to your destination. It is like a road trip. The sooner you, the sooner you start. I had a conversation with a one-on-one -on -one client yesterday. She's like, oh, if my, we had only started this last October. And I'm like, okay, well, you could say that, but that makes you feel stinky. Just start now. Start today and say, if I start now, it's going to be easier if I need to move. Ah. Amber's saying, I joke that my dark glasses give me my eyebrows. So here's a funny thing. I went and got my hair did yesterday, if you'll notice. I did a TikTok live a couple of days ago. My hair is shorter than that, but I also have my guy do my brows because um, they're all turning white now because I have of an age. But yeah, I, this helps define this, right? Christine is saying, I had an illness several years ago and have just left so much declutter. I need a game plan. Okay, Christine, wicked easy. Couple things, and I've seen you comment on some stuff because I recognize your, um, your little four-leaf clover, your uh, shamrock, right? So, you know, Emron Gobralis, as I like to say. Um, start small. Everybody, start small. Do not overwhelm yourself at the beginning. Do not try to do too much too soon. You're gonna hurt yourself. I like to think of this as somebody says, like, not a sprint, a marathon. And I am not a particularly, um, what do I call it, athletic person. But I like to think of when you begin to declutter, this is like you going to the gym after not doing it for a long time. Start with the small weights. Start with the easy things. Start with repetitions of small things to build up your decluttering muscle. And your decluttering muscle isn't your, just what you move with your hands. This right here, my dears. Your brain, ooh, your brain, your brain is your decluttering muscle. Get used to using this. Oh, that feels good. Oh. Get used to using your brain and asking it the same question over and over again. What is this thing? Do I want it now in my life? Okay, if I want it, where does it go? If I don't want it, where, want it in my life, where does it go? That is practice. Start with the simple stuff. Start small and start easy. Three levels of clutter. Surface, stored, sentimental. They get a little bit more challenging as you go deeper. Deeper, because sentimental is at your heart. Start with the easy stuff. Start with the stuff that's on your surfaces. Trash goes in the trash. Recycles goes in the recycles. Dirty laundry goes in the laundry. The easy peasy stuff that doesn't kind of involve your, your emotions, okay? Everybody. These, these ways to get started are small and easy to get you started. Start in one room and maybe focus in one room so that you can see the before and afters, all right? Start small and show up and show up and show up and it gets better and better and better. And also change your habits. Notice what got you, to, what got you cluttered and stop doing the things. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Check yourself to say, whoa, I was gonna do that thing that makes me cluttered. I'm gonna stop that, I'm gonna do something else. Every time you stop that, you decrease the energy in the neural pathway in your brain that does the habit that got you cluttered, and it makes the neural pathway in your brain stronger to just do the new habit. It's a new habit. Get better habits so you don't get have to re declutter like you might have to when we first meet because you've got a backlog of clutter. Listen to me. God, backlog of clutter. Did you hear that? That was wicked funny. All right, what else we got? My kids are better cluttering than I am. Interesting. Amen. You know, I believe the children are our future and all that. Make it easy for them. You know, we as a generation have different feelings about stuff. Thoughts and feelings about your stuff result in what you do. The generations below us have different thoughts and feelings. They see how much this stuff weighs us down. And they don't want to be weighed down like that. And I, I agree with them. I don't want to be weighed down. I want to be, I want to enjoy what I have. I will say this, if I was starting out earlier, I would probably have far less stuff in my house. But I grew up as in a cluttered home with people who love to collect stuff. We went collecting as our hobby. We went thrifting as a hobby, we went to antique shows, all sorts of gather, 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 gather. And that's fun. I'm always like, it's fun until it's not. It worked until it didn't, you know? And just notice that. So notice why it is difficult for you and typically, 
The call is coming from within inside the house, which is you've got a thought about your stuff that makes you feel a feeling. And when you feel a feeling, you do a thing. You probably have an unhelpful thought based in fear. You know, this is my life coaching that makes you hang on to stuff or not want to change or get afraid of moving or afraid of change. Um, but on the other hand, on the other side of you, on the other side is a helpful thought that makes you feel good. And when you feel good, you do good. Feel better, you do better. There we go. Um, Jill is saying, I am struggling with all the pictures I have. I take lots of pictures. I scrapbook for many years. Awesome. Do that if it's fun. But if it's not fun anymore, you can stop it. Stop it. I used to print out my pictures and put them in albums. We are in a different, um, we are in a different era of technology, right? Um, notice that like I have totally stopped doing um, printed pictures. Even my nieces and nephews, when they were growing up, my sisters would send me pictures. Now it's, I'm lucky and I've, I'm fine with this. If I get texted, you know, a digital photo, it's fine. The world is evolving. We should notice that and evolve our systems like this. Okay. Um, and Sherry CH says, it's just hard to part with things. And I will just ask you to think about that. Um, yeah, some things are a little bit more thought you need to put a little bit more thought into it notice even when i'm saying thought i'm putting my hands on my heart because you're thinking about it with your heart some things some things are hard to part with other things are easy start with the easy stuff give yourself the room give yourself the space that you will need doing the surface clutter first allows you the surfaces you will need to then deal with your stored clutter because you need to sort it before you store it right you have to go at it yeah I love it. Nice to see everybody. I see some friendly faces. Um, Amber, I love that you're finding so much of this. Okay. Um, what do we got here? I tell myself the house is sinking. Yeah, it does, doesn't feel heavy. A lot of times when I ask people how they want to feel, they want to feel light. They don't want to feel so weighed down. It is a burden. It is. Your stuff can, the, the stuff can be fun and then sometimes it just weighs you down. Okay. Oh, D Perez is saying, I've been on this journey since December of last year, and I tell you, I have grown so much. I love it. I love it because this is a journey of self-discovery. Now, as a life coach who was like, I was so reticent to get into the life coaching biz because I'll be honest with you, some of it makes me just be like, oh my God, ah, you know, it doesn't speak to me. I speak to you like I would like to be spoken to because I know when I was looking for life coaching, I was like, oh, some of this stuff is just not... I'm Gen X, and so I tend to, and from New England, so I tend to be like, yeah, whatever, dude, right? But when I say it's a journey of self-discovery, how about this? Getting to know yourself on a road trip, same kind of thing, but a lot more fun. You get to know you. You get to know all about you. You get to know what you like. You get to know what you don't like. You notice what you did like. Do you still like it? Do you still eat strained peas? No, that's okay. You can evolve. Catch yourself up. Catch your stuff up to the stuff you want now. And also look in the future. Do you think you'll want this in the future? I started to look that way and I realized that there are very few things. Like we were just on vacation. I didn't buy any souvenirs. I think we got some we got some alcohol because we drink that and it's gone. It was something else. I feel like I bought maybe one thing. I can't even remember. But I very, buy very few trinkets and tchotchkes. I love the ones I have. But do I want to add to it? Nah, not so much unless it's something I really want. And then I say, hell yeah, I'll get it. Okay. Both of my parents, says Carolina, both of my parents died literally at the same time and they had a ton of things I am overwhelmed. See, so for Carolina, first of all, that sucks. I am so sorry your parents died at the same time and shouldered, left you with that. Notice that they delayed making decisions about their stuff, that it was difficult for them to do it. So they just said, I can't do this for whatever reason. Now you're with it. What I will say is overwhelm. I will deal with overwhelm first and then we'll get to, you know, the overwhelm. Chunk it down. When you think overwhelm, this is the one fun thing I would love to leave you all with because this can apply to every part of your life. The way I coach about about um, decluttering, you can copy and paste the systems we use, the processes, the methods into other areas of your life like nobody's business. So I'll give you this one. Overwhelm has the word over. It's over you. You've got the, the, you've got the world over your head. It's too big. You're looking at it too big. What you need to think of instead of over, you say, aha, when I think over, you stop yourself from being overwhelmed and you start to think down. Instead of over, you think down. Funny thing is, as I realize when I coach, I am often thinking of the opposites on this side, but over and down is this way. Okay. What do I mean by down? I mean, first of all, breathe down. <sighs> breathe some, <laughs> breathe some 
uh, oxygen down into your lungs. Take a few deep breaths. Calm your physical body and your mind so you can make better decisions. Calm down. Breathe down. Calm down. Write it down. Dump it down. Dump down the thoughts in your head. Get them out of your head and down onto paper. Write it down. What do you want to do with some of the stuff? Write it down. Then chunk it down. What does chunk it down mean? Start small. Chunk it down into a small thing that says, I can do this little bit today, and then I can show up tomorrow in a little bit at a time. Okay? That's how you start. And every day you do it. No. Andrea is saying my entire house is cluttered, but everything is sentimental because of ADHD, especially kids' toys. Notice, Andrea, I will say this. Notice that you have a thought in your head. Notice the kind of the drama words, too. Again, when I'm only reading things, I can only infer stuff. But my entire house is cluttered. My entire house. And I say this in a loving kind of kidding way because it's kind of dramatic. My entire house, I bet there are areas of your home that aren't cluttered. Maybe, maybe not. But you know what? When you tell yourself, see, this is how this works. Think about it. When you say to yourself in your head, that's a thought. When you say something to yourself in the head, whether it's an automatic thought or one you put there, you, you, you write down and you tell yourself a more helpful thought. When you say to yourself, everything is sentimental, well, then how does that make you want to even move forward? I can't. I can't even move forward. Everything's sentiment. Everything is sentimental. Everything is sentimental. I mean, I joke. We have this um, thing in my family with my sister about that kind of when you anthropom anthropomorphize something, you give it characteristics, and you're like, oh, poor paper plate. Like everything. Like, you know what? You probably have a pen. Now, this could be sentimental. Actually, yeah, my sister did give this to me, but like, it's also useful. There are things in your home that aren't sentimental. Notice I started with the three levels of clutter, surface, stored, and sentimental. Some things will be sentimental. The percentage in your home varies for you. Start with the stuff that is not sentimental. Just start. And then you will create surfaces that you can then Dump out your stuff, sort before you store the stored stuff, and then you can get to the sentimental stuff. But notice that that was a thought that made you feel a feeling. Everything is sentimental. Ugh, oh my God, everything's sentimental. I can't get rid of anything. It's all sentimental. Keeps you stuck. Unhelpful thought. And thank you for whoever sent like little flowers. I, I never know how that stuff works, but it's always nice to see. Um, notice how when you, when you think an un unhelpful th feeling, excuse me, when you think an unhelpful thought, it makes you feel an unhelpful feeling, like discouraged, stuck, uh, you don't do anything. On the other hand, on the other hand, like a Muppet, on the other side, you can create a more helpful thought. Not everything. See, I show up as your, I show up on this side. I show up as your, as your coach, as your internal voice that when you work with me, you cultivate. What's the opposite of that? Not everything is sentimental. Yeah, okay, you're right. Not everything is sentimental. I feel a little bit more encouraged in my body, like, oh, I could do something. Let me go. I'm curious now. Curiosity is going to be your best friend on this road trip. I am curious. What in my house is not sentimental? What can I easily get rid of? You know, donate, put in the trash, what have you. Notice that a more helpful thought makes you feel possibility, encouragement. I can do this. You have done other things in your life. You can do this to get the result you want. Whether you choose to or not is completely up to you. That's why when I coach people, we have a consultation. And two of the questions I ask are, how committed are you to do the work, to do different things, to make this happen? And how much are you going to stick with it? And I do that because if you're not ready, it isn't going to work. But if you're ready, it works. Okay, there we go. Uh, here we go. There we go. I love it. Christine is talking about the Pomodoro method. Now, I don't have Pomodoro is a timer um, that came from actually the guy who invented it um, was had a timer that looked like a, a tomato, a tomato, as my, we might have said back in the day um, in Boston. But um, I use the timer on my phone. 20 minutes. Set the timer for 20 minutes on your phone. That's chunking it down time wise. Even now, look at it. So it's 934 a.m. where I am. If you're just tuning in, my name is Beth, Destination Decluttered, Decluttering Life Coach. I help you go from stuck to started. I give you the tools. I show you how to drive because you may not know how to drive, but we're driving towards your destination. What do you want your home to look like? What do you want your home to feel like? What do you want to feel? How do you want to feel when you're in your home? 
And how do you want your home to function? And I'm a life coach, so we deal with all that stuff with the goal of creating a life you want when you've finally dealt with all the clutter that's just in the way of you moving forward, okay? Just notice that. And um, use this TikTok Live, this actual TikTok Live as a timer. Even if you're watching the recording of it, when I download this from TikTok and upload it to the um, Destination Decluttered YouTube channel, um, use this next 25 minutes or so that I'm gonna be live as a timer. You will have a buddy for the next 25 minutes hanging out with you while you go through some of that surface clutter. You can listen to me chatting away in the background saying, you can do this, you got this, it's gonna be so much fun. It's not gonna be as bad as you think. This can actually be fun. You may discover some things, look at it as a treasure hunt. You're making your own HGTV show before and after. All this fun stuff gets you up and going as opposed to sitting and stuck, right? Notice how that kind of thing can make a difference. And when you do it, only you can declutter your own house. I'm not gonna come do it for you, I can't, because I would just be asking you over and over the questions you ask yourself, which is, what is this? Do I want it? If I want it, where does it go? If And if I don't want it, where does it go? Simple, easy, peasy, squeezy. Okay, there we go. Um, what else do we got? Um, Amber is saying, oh, 50 new messages. Oh my gosh, okay. Thank you, everybody. If you haven't liked my page, could you like my page? That would be awesome. Thank you. Um, I will get to them. Amber is saying, I tell myself, don't put it down, put it away, which annoys me, but I see how much it helps me. You know what? It annoys me. Oh my God. You know what that is? I said, like, your your Luddite brain, your, being, your brain who's so used to doing the lazy thing, and not the lazy thing, that's a judgy word, but the, the thing that you're used to doing, that habit, that habit that you have a better, more smoothly paved road because you've done it so much when you stop yourself from doing the thing and stop yourself from going down the easy pain it causes your brain to be like oh that's right wait we're, we're we're paving a new path we're paving see what i do there paving and cars and road trips we're paving a better path the better path is going to get you to where you want to go right there we go i love it user patty pumpkin said made it to the animal shelter donated blankets and unused dog toys Moving slowly on your walker, but moving slowly, you're moving. I say this to myself. We just came back from a whirlwind trip, and I came back, and I was tired. And I said, I may be moving slowly, but I'm moving. All right? Here we go. Let me just back up a little bit. Yeah, need to pave many new paths. Miracles and money. You know what? Here's the thing I will offer. Don't – all the paths should lead to the, the destination you want. One path. It's just one path. Go, everything you do leads to that one path. Notice what you can do in many levels of your life to get to that one place. And you really don't know where you're going until you define it, okay? <laughs> CM LeClaire says, oh, I'll be hearing your voice while I pack. Oh, I'm wicked sorry about that. I want, Well, here's the deal. I show up as an external representation of your internal co-pilot. That can be like God, spirit, soul, whatever is in you. You have a voice inside you that says to you, you can do this, you got this. Now you may not hear it often because you're so used to the, what I call your backseat driver thoughts, the unhelpful ones that keep you stuck. The kids chattering, chattering, the automatic thoughts that are always pushing. You can slow them down, you can quiet them down, notice the down, from overwhelmed to down. And you can listen for and cultivate your own, I got this, I can do this voice. Now, as a coach and as somebody shows up, you may, for the beginning, do it like I do. You may hear my voice, but what I want you to do is this is not about me. This is not about me. This is about you, me coming into your life for a finite amount of time to teach you how to do this, like a, like a driver's ed teacher, so that you practice and then suddenly you just know how to do it yourself because you practice so much. There we go. Judy and Kid says, I start with my countertop, putting things away, but then I am counterproductive going to the same room. Just notice that. And I love it. Counter, counterproductive, kind of like it. Where do we go? So many places to start. How do I decide where first? I don't know, wherever you want. Where's a place that's going to make a big difference to you? Where's a place where you stand and you look and you say, ugh, start there. I say also, and this actually, shout out to my um, distracted ADHD um, folks uh, that also may be going through menopause. Like we get is more easily distracted. We live in a really distracting world. It is an effort to remain focused on stuff. But notice when you clutter, when you declutter one area and you stay focused on it, you see results quicker than if you spread your energy all around. Notice that when you are able to practice being focused and you can start that by using your timer, 
and saying, I'm going to stay in this room for 20 minutes and I'm just going to work in this room until I'm done, you will see better results. It's like anything you practice. Imagine practicing five different um, instruments instead of sticking with one for the same amount of time. You're going to see more progress the more you can focus on it. Now, I'm not saying you have to be so rigid about it, but if you want to see results, start in a place that's going to make it so much better when you say, ah, oh, this feels so much better now that I look at my kitchen counters, right? You do you. I love it. Kate in Texas and Kitty Cadets are saying, I found some beautiful things I forgot I had. This is where I think it's so fun to do decluttering because it's like a treasure hunt. I have had clients find cash. I have had clients find gold in them Lar hills, right? You know, jewelry that they were able to sell for hundreds of dollars or keep, you know, I have had clients come across hundreds of dollars worth of like gift cards in that pile of paper that they've been dreading going through. I just ran into a neighbor this morning who said that when they were cleaning out her grandmother's house, I think it was her grandmother, because she was so old school and had some, you know, thoughts about clutter and stuff and money and banks and all that had had like stuffed money tucked it away in the linens in the linen closet, they found cash. I'm not saying you're going to find cash, but what you're going to do is you're also going to find out about yourself, you know, and you're going to find what, what's important, you know, and it's kind of fun. I love it. I love it. All right, here we go. Somebody says, Christine says, I've heard for something that something goes in, something, something in, something out. Good habit to get into. Yeah, I will say this. I will free you up to say there are no right, there are no hard and fast rules. But if you decrease the amount of stuff in your home and you remove it and you decrease the amount of stuff that comes in, you will remain with a level that's just right for you. The way you do it is up to you, but the quicker you do it in a way that feels right to you and you're aligning all the stuff that you have, do it in a way that feels right to you, but just make progress. Okay, there we go. What else? This generation, oh, Bonnie Esther, nice to see you. This generation seems more clean lives, but older folks like me saw a lot of knickknacks and doilies. Yeah, because you know what? That generation behind, above us, before us, had a certain, like it, it meant something to have enough money to buy an item. Now, the interesting thing is, is that your, these future generations, you know, younger generations are um, spending money on stuff, but it's not typically tactile, always tactile stuff. They're spending money on trips, on pictures, like their pictures are their kind of visual representation about, look at how cool my life is. Back before you were taking photographs, you may have, here's the, you know, the family silver or the china meant we had enough money to buy the good stuff. It's a symbol of your life. And because we have, we are in the transition or in that kind of gray zone of, we remember when it was before digital and some people like we're hybrid. Other kids just see the, the weight of these things and they see landfills and thrift stores and all that. They're doing the same thing. It's just different. It's just digital, you know? So we are humans that want to express our lives by what we focus on, you know? There we go. Yeah, and, and Amber, I love that you're recommending the Pomodoro message. We need to get the victory hit of our brain seeing us do the helpful acts. Yes, yeah, that victory hit, that, that dopamine rush, that like, damn, look at that. I... I don't, I never realized how much until I realized that we have ADHD in my family, both diagnosed and medicated and undiagnosed and unmedicated and everywhere in between, how much I have set up the systems and processes in my own life to get myself that little dopamine hit wherever I can, you know, like I will dump down the thoughts I have of the stuff I need to do today. I'll get them on my head and I'll feel, yay, check me out. I did that. Then I'll do it. And I'll cross it out. Yay, check me out. I did it. Then I will rewrite it. Where's my book? I will write it in another book to say, look what I did to get my life going. A little dopamine hit. It's like a little treat every day. And that is the little encouragement that keeps me going. And I do it. I don't, I guess, organically manufacture that as easily as some people. So I probably have that ADHD, but I have found a way that works for me. I found a way that if I don't remember to do a habit, I have, tr I have, um, you know, what do you call it? reminders, you know, find a system that works for your brain and gets you the results you want. Um, do you help with reorganizing a small space? Um, I can. What I will say is check the small space. I know this is going to sound silly, but check the small space and just ask yourself, what do I want this space? What's my destination of the space? What do I want it to look like? How do I want to use it? What do I want it to function like? How do I want to do it? And then what isn't 
what doesn't work in there? You know, what isn't part of that vision? Now, I know what I'm doing is a lot of a visualizing, like the visualizing in your brain, and some people struggle with that. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. The more you can put more detail into what you want your home to look like, the more specific you can get. You're just aiming your target to be more specific, and that will weed out a lot of the stuff that just doesn't fit. Like if I said I wanted my room to my home to be light and bright and colorful and cheerful like Palm Springs, that means that old, heavy, Victorian, dark wooden furniture doesn't move in it. But if I say, I don't know, I don't know how I want my house to look, then you don't know if the heavy, dark furniture fits in or the bright white Ikea furniture fits in. You know, it's all about you, my dear. Okay, Heather, it's all about you. Trust what you want and go for it. Okay. Um, I love it. Abbott Elementary. Unpacking my overnight bag from last month while watching. I am so glad you're doing that. Getting into that habit of unpacking your stuff, putting it away, makes you feel good. Do I want to be a part of my story? Road trip is going to be the mental. Do I want this to be a part of my story or road trip is going to into the mental question list? Yeah. I love that. I often will. I'll say this. I look at my life sometimes from my deathbed. I do. I go way to the very end where we're all going to be. And I look backwards and I say, all right, at this time of when I look back to this age I am now from my deathbed, what do I want to see myself doing? And what do I want to say? Yay, I'm so glad I did that versus damn it. I wish I had been brave enough because I look back right now, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. I have regrets of what I did and what I didn't do. And I am getting better at catching up with those and also realizing that the way I got here got me to here and I love where I am. So how can I maintain that and also make sure that when I get to my deathbed that I look back and I look at a life well lived, that I feel like I did all I wanted, that I helped people, that um, I made the best of my time here. So maybe think about that. Everybody, we're all kind of going on our, you know, our own little journeys, but at the end, we all end up on our deathbed. So when you do that, what do you want to look back and see what your journey was like? Do you want to be like, oh, I got stuck and I was afraid to move forward. I was afraid to live the life I wanted. I was afraid to change. That's up to you. I don't want fear driving me. I don't want fear influencing what I do. I want love. I want love influencing me. Possibility, hope, encouragement, curiosity. Those are the things that when I get that in my gas tank, man, awesome things happen. Awesome things like I show up uh, on a random, whatever, it's Thursday morning and do a TikTok live to encourage people to give you a bit of that inspiration. Whew, there you go. You got this. You have that in you. I didn't know I had it in me for years, but then I started to cultivate it, cultivate it like a garden. I started watering that, pulling out the weeds that were unhelpful, started watering the flowers. Be more like a flower, less like a weed. How's that? All right. <laughs> Bonnie Esther is saying, you have a very practical coaching style. Very appreciated. Thank you. Because here's the deal. I am from New England. I am Massachusetts born and bred. And I don't have to, I, you know, I just, it, I hate having to translate jargon so that I can understand what the heck people are talking about. So that's why I try to be so clear, so simple. So you don't have to be like, oh, okay. So when she's saying a belief, what is a belief? Is a belief a thought? Is a thought a belief? It's a thought, Johnny. Listen to me. It's a thought. You got a sentence in your head that makes you feel good or bad. Put more sentences in your head that make you feel good. When you feel good, you do better, right? It can be as simple as that. It doesn't have to be difficult. Sometimes I think that people need feel like they need to kind of obscure things and get all mystical. Everybody speaks in their own language. I am, I like to be very direct and get to the point because I want to, I want to stop us. I want us to go. I want us to hit the road and make progress, right? That's what I do it. Oh, magnets for trip collecting. I did that for a while until I didn't. I actually just saw some in my garage this morning saying, you know what? I wonder if maybe there's a different thing I can do with those. All right. All right. What else do we have here? Love it. Nancy with a smile is saying, I'm clearing up my cabinets. I say, listen, right now, you guys, we got 11 minutes now. What can you do? And you know, just you can do something in 11 minutes to make your life less cluttered. Why don't you get up and listen to me for the next 11 minutes, but move around. Mix stuff up, change things, put some trash in the trash, some laundry in the laundry thing, put the dishes away. You can get started. Okay. All right. Oh, thank you for all the, the stuff, the um, the little gifts. I never know how to work those. 
but thank you. I appreciate them. Um, okay. Yeah, you know what, Andrea? Notice that when you have unhelpful thoughts, overwhelmed thoughts keep you stuck. When you can chunk those down, when you can calm those down, there's a video on my TikTok page. So everybody here, if you haven't liked my TikTok page, if you could like it, that would be cool. Um, also, because I do these TikTok lives um, often, um, like I will have one tomorrow. Do I have one tomorrow? Crapola. I might not have written it down because we got something coming up. Um, but anyhow, um, you will be notified when I do, when I uh, am, am live. And the fun thing is, is I schedule TikTok lives. There is a schedule. Yes, I have one from 9 to 10 tomorrow. Let me write that down. Things have changed. TikTok live. See, even as a coach who teaches people how to get the stuff out of their head and write things down, I have to do it myself. Um, what I want to offer is I often will pop up unannounced doing a TikTok live. You know, I, I will schedule some, I do schedule some, but I also like to show up when I can, not all the time, but I do. The other thing too, I just want to mention really quickly in case you're, this is the first time you've heard of me or met me. I also have a mailing list that I send out to people. I do a monthly zoom call. Um, and also I do one-on-one -on -one coaching for people for 10 week sessions. I'm not talking about that a lot right now, because I'll be honest with you. Um, I have not set up the schedule for, um, like September for my coaching consultations and when the things are going to be. So if you're interested in the, I mean, you could get on the, you could get on the mailing list if you wanted to, I'm just checking to make sure it works is, um, uh, what do you call it? Destination .com is my website. Oh, this is cool. A couple of people have already found it and filled it out. Um, you get a, you get a habit tracker when you sign up, um, and you will be, you will be invited when you're on the list to the, September. Oh my God, you guys, it's already going to be September. The September group zoom call. Also, the folks on the mailing list are the ones that get first dibs on my consultations and coaching. Um, so if you're interested in coaching, the very first, if you want to get in, and this is not one of those fear-based things, I'm just being factful, is they get first dibs. You get first dibs and it's free to get on the mailing list. So why wouldn't you do it? I also don't spam you because I freaking hate spam. I find it annoying. And why would I clutter up your, your email box, right? So there we go. There we go. I love it. Decluttering, I am finding new things over 15 years old. I never used feeling guilty, feeling overwhelmed. Notice that when you feel guilty and overwhelmed, it feels lousy. And when you feel lousy, you do nothing or you just beat yourself up and you feel like crap. Kitty cats, stop that. You did it. Okay, whatever. Water under the bridge. That was then. That was then. This is now. As the guy from ABC would sing, you can tell I'm Gen X and I'm goofy because I'm singing along. Um, okay, 15 years ago, you bought it. You didn't use it. Good. You notice that you didn't need it. Do something with it now and learn from it. Everybody, learn from what you did back then so you become a better you now. You did the best you could 15 years ago with the skills and thoughts you had. Love that person. But also say, you're different right now. Make a different decision. Do you want that thing? The guilt and stuff just keeps you stuck. It, it drains your energy so much that you don't feel like you want to do it. So stop the draining of the energy and say, you know what? This is not helpful. This is not helpful. I'm going to plug up that energy. I'm going to say, you know what? That was then. What can I do now? Kitty cats, what can you do today, Thursday, August 24th, 2023, with new things that are over 15 years old. Can you sell them? Can you gift them somewhere? Can you donate them? Can you start to use them? Those are all things you can do. Getting out of your head and into action that's gonna lead you to feel better is a great start, all right? There we go. Ooh, the guardian, Vicki Ray, the guardian of memories. I think I saw that TV show once, right? The guardian of memories. Some memories are good. Keep the good ones, discard the bad ones. Evolve, share your stories. If you have memories, share them with people. Don't wait to share the stuff you have, the memories you have, the things you have, the heirlooms you have. Share, share, share. Connect with people. Make them care about like the stories. Make them feel connected to their generations. You know, there we go. Interesting, so Nigeri Life Inspired. I just came back from a five week vacation and when I walked back in my house, I wanted to go back. Notice that. That is such a good thing. I just recently did like a um, TikTok stitchy something or other. I can't remember what it is, but there was a really good, I was on vacation last week too. Maybe we're in the same place. And um, there was a, uh, 
an article in the New York Times about coming back home from vacation. So this is a great thing because you now have contrast. You know what it's like to be away and to live minimally, live with not as much stuff as your home. To, so you can say, I don't need all this stuff to live. Maybe that will inspire you to reduce the amount of items. Use it as an opportunity. What did you feel like when you were on vacation? And how can you get that vacation feel at home? Now, I'm not suggesting that you, you know, decorate your home like, you know, the Cape or, you know, the Outer Banks or wherever you vacation. But, you know, I kind of like enjoy the, um, what do I want to say, like the style of, uh, what do you call it, Palm Springs, California and mid-century stuff. So our house kind of reflects that. So bring that joy, that good feeling you have on vacation into your home so you can also enjoy that feeling when you're at home. All right. There we go. Love it. Do your best. Yeah. On the hunt for non-sentimental things. Love it. All right. Okay. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I have massive travel anxiety and my home just needs to be surgery clean before I leave just in case. Yeah. Just in case somebody has to look in your house. How about this? How about you just want to walk in after your desk, after you travel and say, ah, this is good. I feel good. So, so there you go. Exactly. Amber. So coming home feels fantastic too. Miracles and money is saying I vibe with that same thing here. I walk in and I'm like, I love it. I love traveling. I also love coming home, opening the door and saying, ah, and then opening the windows and getting some fresh air in and then easily, you know, putting stuff in the dish, the, um, the washing machine, putting away our stuff and then loving where we live, you know, such a good idea. Such a good idea. All right, we got four minutes here. I love it. Miracles and monies recycled and threw away a large bag of, bag of stuff. Small but significant. No, you said it was a large bag, so it's not small. It's large, Marge. Okay, every little bit helps. Every little bit helps. If I ever got a tattoo, I feel like that would be one I would I would write on me. But my skin is kind of old, and it would probably just bleed out. You know, it would be a big mush. Every little bit helps. It's like a road trip, people. Every step forward is a step away from what you used to have and closer to where you are. You will get there. The more steps you take, the sooner you will get there. But this is not going to be, it didn't get this way. You didn't get here overnight. You're not going to get there overnight. But man, when you know what you're aiming for and you take action every day to declutter, to reduce the amount of stuff that doesn't do it for you and give yourself space for what does, that's the, the, the sooner you get there, you, you just start living in that future state. As soon as you start decluttering, you've already changed your environment to be closer to what you want it to, right? Notice that and what a good feeling it is. I love it. Janet said last night, I cleaned a drawer last night and slept better. Sleeping better, feeling better. It's all about better. Let me leave you with this, okay? It's not about perfection. Perfection is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Perfection Somebody said recently something, per perfection is like a fancy word for procrastination. No, it's not perfection. It's not all or nothing. How you get the journey, the, this road trip is a little bit at a time, over and over, aiming yourself to that North Star of how you want your home to look and feel, showing up and doing a little bit at a time. And when you do that, you feel better. Janet said she feels better after one drawer. You go for that better feeling and it becomes a little bit addictive. I'm not saying you get rid of all of your stuff, but I have a client who's a former client who actually shows up on the TikTok, um, the, the Zoom calls for the people on the mailing list. And she's she was reticent about that. She didn't know if it was going to work. She thought it cost a lot of money. She continues to this day to say, I really enjoy decluttering. And the more that I have those skills, you don't just declutter in the 10 weeks that we work together. She's got those skills for the rest of her life and they are copy and pasteable to different areas of your life. All right. So I've got a clock out now because I've got consultations and coaching and stuff like that there. Oh, that's tomorrow. I almost freaked out that I had a, co a, a coaching call right after this. Anyhow, so awesome that you all showed up. You guys can do this. See, you're even encouraging yourself. Encourage. Encourage. Give yourself the courage to start. Notice, Christine, if procrastination is your Achilles heel, procrastination keeps you stuck. What's going to get you started? And what I want to offer to you is get freaking excited about what you want your home to look and feel like and drive towards it. That excitement of getting there is what will get you more excited to go to the beach, even if it's three hours away, than to stay stuck in your driveway. Life is too short to be stuck in your driveway. Get out there. You're the driver. Start driving towards the life of your dreams, okay? I will see you tomorrow morning. And you got this, okay? You can do this, all right? I'll see you. Bye.